Yeah, hi there everyone. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for coming along. It's, it's bang on 2.30, so it's, it's probably a, a good time to start, just to give us plenty of time. Welcome to Power to the Editors, introducing uh, the Paragraphs module. Uh, before I jump into the talk, I'd just like to say a little bit about Ivan and I. We'll be doing the presentation uh, together today. Um, we're site builders, module developers, and we're problem solvers. And we, were, we met the Paragraphs module about sort of six months ago and really sort of fell in love with it because of the flexibility it gave us in our site building. And uh, we decided, you know, that we liked it so much that we were going to sort of build a whole sort of stack of modules uh, around it to support it and augment it. And uh, the talk you're seeing today really is a result of probably two or three months of planning and scheming and programming uh, between Ivan and I and other members uh, of our team. The, uh, the talk is uh, about power to the editors, right? So it's, it's about giving editors and content creators the ability to build really, really good looking uh, websites. But in order to do that, uh, site builders need to be able to support them. So this is very much a site building presentation that we're giving today, but it is all about uh, giving power to the content creators. And it's basically about giving better tools to them so that they can express themselves better. What's, what are we going to see today? Well, first off, true to the form of the, uh, the title of the, the presentation, we will be giving an introduction to the Paragraphs module. So we'll just be giving you a quick overview there, showing what you can do with it. But we'll also go through the, the toolkit of uh, Contrib modules that we've been uh, working on and show how they've solved problems that we've come up against when uh, working with our clients. And there'll also be sort of demonstrations along the way and a, a couple of quick sort of demos at the end to, to show what uh, is possible. So yeah, the, the format very much is going to be around problems and solutions. So what Ivan and I are going to do now is just sort of, sort of throw up a few questions that clients may throw at you when you're building sites and then you know, some of the, the solutions that we've come up with. So the first one is, how can I control the ordering and positioning of widgets? Now, as site builders, this is one of the basic problems we've got to solve, right? You know, we, we've got blocks, we've got panelizer, um, you know, we've sort of got any number of other methods of placing and positioning items on a page. But all of these solutions are very much site builder centric. You know, it's up to the site builder to put this stuff in, wrap it up in a feature and deploy it. But how can an editor or a content creator actually do these things? Where is the freedom for them? So uh, Ivan will flick across an example and, and just sort of kind of show, show you these examples as we go along. Now this is a, first off, this is from our Paragraphs demo site. Um, so all of this stuff you'll be seeing today is at the, the Paragraphs site showcase.com. Um, URL, so you can sort of go there and, and see all of this stuff if you want to check it out after the talk. But basically, this is a very, very simple page, but what, what we're looking at here is sort of one paragraph, another paragraph, and this paragraph here. Now, this is incredibly simple. They're just basic sort of simple content paragraphs that we'll, we'll call them. But these have be really been positioned by the content creator. So the site builder hasn't said I'm placing a block here or a field here. The content creator has said, OK, I want to sort of put this paragraph over in the sidebar and this paragraph down here. So this is a very sort of, uh, sort of simple example of the kinds of things that content creators want to do. They want to be able to put stuff on the page and position the way they want. OK, so I'm going to take you through. Uh, I'll just explain what Paragraphs is and how we use it. So the Paragraphs module is a module is a module that allows site builders to build reusable paragraph types which an, which an editor can simply add or, or remove. Paragraph types are fieldable, which means you can add fields to them like you can on content types. Some paragraph types are simple, like a content, and all the way to a full-blown gallery. So you can actually create different types of paragraph types. So instead of putting everything into the WYSIWYG and fighting against it, with paragraphs, you can easily manage things in chunks. So an editor gets to select which paragraph type using a basic drop-down, and then, and, then they, and, then, and then they click on add a paragraph. 
Now, I'm going to get technical here. From a Drupal standpoint, paragraphs are simply entities, which means they are fieldable. So you can add all sorts of fields to them, like date field, geo field, whatever you want. Because they are entities, you can use display suite to change their look and feel. And this gives the site builder an enormous amount of flexibility. Now, now you may be thinking to yourself, isn't this similar to field collections? Well, no, it's not. Because here in this slide, you see two fields. Field collection allows you to create an ordered list of the same type of thing, name and phone, whereas paragraphs allows you to create an ordered list of different things, like content, uh, content list, taxonomy, term list, and all of these have their own custom fields. And that's the biggest difference, really. Cool. All right, so, so once we've got that sort of foundation, we can understand that you know, editors can sort of place and move things around and, and place them in different regions. But it's now sort of going to step off and have a look at some of the things that we've been building out to, to sort of help the process. So we were talking to a client and they said, we want the edge designs to go edge to edge. You know? So we're probably all familiar with this sort of design trend these days of, of having you know, sort of content go right to the edge. The problem is in Drupal, in your sort of page template, usually that content variable is, is stuck in the middle and it doesn't go edge to edge. And this makes it very hard to actually style up this stuff. And uh, you, know, you can sort of put wrappers on that and sort of do blocks in the theme layer, but we don't want to do that. We actually want to have control of the, the full thing. So I will just show a quick example here. This, it's a fairly simple thing. So for example here, th these are, this is a, an ordinary paragraph, but it's been, we've also got control all the way uh, to the edge. And I know this kind of looks simple, but it's, it's quite an important thing. We wanted to be able to drop a paragraph into an edgy design and drop the exact same paragraph into a normal design and just have the thing work. Okay, so we developed a module called Edgy. Edgy displays paragraph items edge to edge, and it does this by controlling where a container class gets added. Now, before I move on, let me quickly explain what a container class is. The class is used to horizontally align content together, and it's used to center things. So here in this slide, this is standard Bartek theme that everyone loves. The context, uh, the container class simply contains the sidebar and the content region, and if we had a right-hand sidebar, the right-hand side. Because it does this at the theme level, you can't have anything that goes edge to edge because it will hit this point. Edgy, on the other hand, controls when a container class gets added to, to a paragraph, and, it, and this allows us to create these edge to edge designs. And here you can see that the actual um, design goes all the way to the end, but the container is controlled by Edgy, and it handles when it's, how it's added and when it's added. So how does this all work? Well, due to all the moving parts, we can't just enable the module and have it working. Edgy depends on Panelizer. We made that de uh, decision because it was hard to pass context into Drupal. Um, we also ship a custom panels layout called Edgy Boxton, um, also a custom C tool style called Edgy, and you have to make two changes to your theme. Um, a bit of code in your hook preprocess page, and just a tiny bit of code that controls when a container class gets added. Yeah, but I mean, the cool thing about that is the site builder can just do that little bit of work up front, and then you can easily support these different layouts, the edgy ones or the normal ones. And you know, a content creator can then just drop that stuff in, and they don't really care. It's just, it's just going to work. So once we've got that edgy stuff going, you know, the next logical step is, okay, well, how can I control this stuff edge to edge? And we had a client said, oh, I want you know, like an orange background on these, but I want a blue background on those, and I, I just want it white on, on the other ones. So. That's where we sort of started working uh, around the next thing. So just a, a quick example of, of how, you know, what, what the kind of thing we're talking about here is, okay, we've got two edgy sort of paragraphs here, but, you know, how can we get these things to be different colors? Oops. Okay. So we developed yet another module called Classy Paragraphs, okay? Classy Paragraphs allows editors to change a paragraph's look and feel by choosing a style, style from a drop-down list. 
the selected style then gets added as a class onto the paragraph element. To put another way, it allows an editor to, ma to make things stand out, or as a client likes to say, pop. You know, we want to make this pop. <laughs> Create a class and call it pop. Uh, the module implements a custom field called class list, which a site builder can add to any paragraph type. The module uh, doesn't ship any styles. So the site builder has to implement hook classy paragraph list to populate that drop down. And yes, before you ask, we've had the first issue that came into the issue queue was, can we offer a UI for this? But as most Drupal developers, we just skip building a UI and say, let's just do it with a hook. So we are in the process of creating a UI, but let's just keep it simple for now. And also, a designer will then have to go in and style what primary dark or primary light looks like. You, you laugh about making it pop. We do have a client here sitting in the audience today, and we did create the funky class for them. So uh, <laughs> that worked pretty well. Um, all right, how, how can we get kick-started? So I mean, we've, we've kind of got the foundation there for edgy and classy. Um, so we just decided, you know, the clients were sort of continually asking for the same kinds of things. You know, can we put a gallery in, a slideshow in, just like a, a simple content one in? So, you know, we're sort of running into these uh, sort of requests time and time again. So, you know, we just thought we'd put together a, a little pack of modules to, uh, to help out with that stuff. And these, these are all um, sort of uh, contrary modules that we've done here. And Ivan's. Just got a quick demo here, just sort of showing off a few of the, the sort of modules that we've, we've been putting together here. Do you want to talk through these, Ivan? Or? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so the first one... <laughs> well, that's all right. We've only practiced it once. Guys. Yeah, okay. So the first one is uh, basic content. Um, it allows the user to create uh, content chunks. Um, and then the next one is content list. They can reference. They can reference other pieces of content. And um, so the last... Let's go back to that oh, one. Sorry. I mean, this is, this is pretty cool, right? So you, with an entity reference field, you can say, hey, I want to pick this item, this item, and I want to you know, display it with this sort of view mode here. So, I mean, when people are building landing pages, how many times have you got to do this? You know, how, how would you do it with like a node queue or something like this? But here they can just kind of drop it in, give it the style they want, and off they go. And just finally, we have a juice box gallery um, that allows an editor to easily create a juice box gallery. <laughs> yes. Is there any chance with this and build it back in the list? Just see how it how uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry. At the end at the end of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so where was I? Okay, so we created another module called Paragraph Paragraphs Pack because Paragraphs Kit was already taken by a sandbox repo, unfortunately. Um so Paragraphs Pack module ships a common collection of paragraph types, each in their own sub-module, and, and a site builder can just come along and enable a module and have a basic paragraph type. The module at this point comes with five paragraph types, content, juice box gallery, content list, taxonomy term list, and user list. The content list, here you go, back end. The content list is the most basic, has a title and a, and a body, and um, it's used to just place content, perfect for sidebars. Juice box gallery, uh, the juice box paragraph type is used to uh, display image galleries using the juice box library. For people who don't know, uh, juice box is a open source, uh, sorry, it's not an open source uh, image gallery, unfortunately, but it works. And if you've ever tried to create slideshows in Drupal, you just spend hours and hours and hours and honestly, like, we don't, we don't get any money for this, but it's 50 bucks, or they even have a free version. So it just works. And if you want any other gallery supported, patch is welcome. So you can just create, create, create a patch for us. Um, content, taxonomy, uh, term, and user list. Uh, all of these paragraph types are very similar. They allow you to reference other entities. The reason why we had to, the reason why we created um, separate types is because entity reference, the module that we are using, um, can uh, only allows you to reference a single entity type. So we had to create separate um, uh, paragraph types. I do know that there's dynamic entity reference uh, field, which I am in the process of reviewing. 
Uh, with that, we also uh, put in functionality that allows an editor to choose which view mode of the referenced entity will be used. So this will allow an editor to create a, a list and then they can render those entities with a specific uh, view mode. So perfect for landing pages and uh, the editor gets a lot of control. And finally, uh, one thing we don't like seeing uh, on projects are uh, overridden features. So we made the decision not to use features at all. We have, a, we have, a, lot of, we have a fair bit of code that programmatically creates the fields. So um, we leave it in your hands. You enable the module and then you export it out into your own features. And you're not stuck with features that are there sitting, sitting in an overridden state. Yeah, uh, just, just to add on to that, I mean, we've, we've done that little paragraphs pack, but in a funny kind of way, that's the, the smallest thing of what we're presenting today because as site builders, you can all just go out and quickly just, you know, bust out your own, you know, paragraph bundles. It's as simple as, you know, adding a few fields and, and styling it. That's the easy part, you know. So, you know, th this is the great thing about it. You've got the flexibility to, to build that functionality for the, the clients as you like. Okay, th this, is, this is a probably more advanced one and, um, you know, once again, I've got a few friends in the audience who are probably familiar with this kind of thing that we've um, been working on and th this is a sort of slightly refactored uh, thing of, of we've, we've done for some of our clients. Um, but this is about filtering and displaying items, right? So we all know how powerful Views is and it's, it's probably one of the major uh, reasons for Drupal's success. Site builders can access that through the Views UI and having, you know, panes and blocks and, and putting them on page. But how can you get that power down into the, uh, the hands of uh, the editors? So um, I was just going to sort of sh show you uh, an outcome of um, something uh, we've done here. The, what, what we see here is that these are two paragraphs, paragraph one, paragraph two. There's a view sitting behind these, but it's the same view, exactly the same view. And the editor has gone in and said, hey, I want to see three items and I want them to be this content type, a demo node, and I want to use this um, sort of display. And this is what's you know, come out, it's part of me for that funny image there. Um, uh, on this second paragraph, they said, hey, we want six items, but we actually want to use the stack display and we want to use landing pages. So what you can see here is we've actually used a paragraph to tie into a view, and there's a little bit of sort of glue configuration in the middle. So, an ed so imagine you have a massive repository of information you chuck a search API view onto it, you have a lot of sort of custom um, filters, and then you just get a paragraph to wire it up and the, the editor can go in and go, oh, yeah, I want that tag, I want that category, I want to have six items, I want them as um, tiles, whatever, boom, goes into the page, they've got it. So you can just create landing pages like that and they can just chuck its paragraph in and you've got that content coming down. It's insanely powerful. Uh, the clients who are using it for us don't really know how cool it is, but you know they certainly appreciate the ability to, to put lists of stuff on pages the way they want. And so you're really exposing the power of Drupal through to the editor. Okay, so views filter object. It's currently a sandbox. The module allows an editor, as Murray mentioned, the module allows an editor to create a list, a a list, and and an editor can select which content type, so here you can see which content type, how many should be displayed, and also which view mode. So that translates into that. Um, now, it's important to understand that this simply lists content. It doesn't reference content like in the paragraphs pack. This lists it out. In essence, we've given editors a, a simplified views interface. All right, so you know, it didn't take us long to think, hey, can we use some parallax with these paragraphs? Here we have these edgy things that go the full width. They're in chunks down the page. Wouldn't it be nice to use parallax? Also, wouldn't it be nice just to drop a custom background into, onto uh, these things, just put an image in? Now, when Ivan and I sat down, well, stood at the whiteboard, we were saying, mm, you know, maybe we could do a parallax paragraph. And I was like, mm, not really, because we put all this effort into paragraphs pack. If we just made a paragraphs bundle, you know, sorry, a parallax bundle, we're just sort of going to just lose all that great work we've done on all the other bundles. So what we've done is sort of worked out a way to sort of do a pluggable system where we can chuck different backgrounds in onto any paragraph. And this is like the cool part of the talk. So, yeah, all right. So, so here we have one paragraph. It's called the entity 
background parallax. That's the actual name of the, the uh, like the little sort of plugin thing we've done. It's just a this is an ordinary content paragraph here, with just with a bit of content over on the left hand side. But if you know if Ivan goes sort of up and down a bit, you can kind of see we've got a bit of a parallax effect there. So this this literally took us 30 seconds just to upload that image. Boom, it's working. So. <laughs> Every time I see this, I get really excited because it's, it's really just, <laughs> it's, just, it's just opening up such amazing possibilities for people to do cool designs in just like 30 seconds. No theming, no CSS involved, you just drop the image in. We've got another one here, very simple one, um, but background colour, that's pretty self-evident, but the editor can just sort of pick a colour and, um, and just style that colour up. Before with Classy, you know, they were picking a class, but in, the, in this case, they're just picking a colour. And we've also got an image one as well. And you know, this is an incredibly effective way just to spice up your designs and to just to give ed, uh, content editors a really easy way to, to drop that stuff in. So I mean, you can see this applying here to, to paragraphs specifically, but you can probably tell by the name of the module that it is specific to entity, entities. So theoretically, this, this sort of uh, approach we've taken could plug into any other entity that, that you've got in the Drupal system. Okay, so the module's called Entity Background, and unfortunately this GIF is not working. Um, so Entity Background just um, puts in a drop-down, and an, and an editor can simply select what type of background they want. Murray's al already explained all the, all the uh, background types that we have, but we have color, image, and parallax. And, um, but conceptually, this is an advanced module. Um, We've already had to deal with a few issues in the issue queue where people just don't quite don't un understand that it is complex. Um, so right now, in, it's in alpha stage, so if you want to use it, you're going to have to look at a bit of the code. Um, background types are implemented using a custom CTools plugin, so if you want to implement your own, just look at the, um, the actual, the existing modules, and then you can implement your own type of background, whatever you want, with any type of parallax. But p part of the secret here is it's a field collection that's actually sort of storing this information and people can just plug the different bits of, like, the different background implementations into that field collection and that, that will sort of display in a nice UI. And we, we can show that at the end, right? We, we can show that. Yeah, we'll, we'll show, show it all you, at the end. Show you an edit screen at the end. Yes. So that's the cool stuff with um, sort of backgrounds. So that's like a specific use case. Here we've, we're doing the behavior of paragraphs. So it's like there's so many cool, like, jQuery sort of libraries out there which can do all this amazing stuff. Uh, and the one we've been looking at is uh, sort of scroller. But, um, you know, basically, uh, as a site builder, you may be wanting to put certain JavaScript effects onto uh, these sort of paragraphs. And we've used a similar approach just to, to sort of get these uh, effects working with paragraphs. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah just yeah, on the example here. This is pretty cool as well. It's a little bit advanced. Maybe it's not to everyone's taste. But the, the scroller module, so scroller library basically allows you to sort of do um, transition effects based on the scroll position of the page. So we've just basically chucked a bit of config in. You have to sort of grok scroller and how it works. But you can see we've got colors changing. I'll just just keep scrolling, sort of nice sort of color transitions. And we've also done a bit of magic here on an image. We can get an image transition. So what you're seeing here is like one paragraph and then another paragraph below and just a little bit of sort of magic just to to make the top image transition on, right? So this is it, once again, it's an advanced tool. A designer would have to understand scroller. But if that designer does understand, they can just go in, image one, sh upload image two, sh put a class on it and a little bit of transition stuff, and then you've got this amazing thing. And uh, if you know what you're doing, it's very quick to, to put that stuff together. Sorry, one question. Is this only one node, or do you have separate nodes? Yeah, like this, paragraph? well, a paragraph is an entity, so you have a node. And then you have a field which says, hey, these are the, the, main, the main content paragraphs. And you just then put your, the paragraphs in, sort of going like that. So we probably could have shown a better edit screen at the start on the paragraphs module. But at, at the end, we'll walk through yeah, what we'll one of these looks like, very yeah. slow in slow detail to, to have a look. OK, so here's entity behaviors. Um, the concept of entity behaviors is very similar to entity backgrounds but with a slight twist. Um, entity behaviors gives editors or designers the ability to attach custom behaviors to paragraph types. A behavior is simply a bit of JavaScript code uh, that gets attached and executed on an entity. Um, we, we often talk about attaching these to paragraphs, but they can be attached to 
nodes, users, or any, any entity type. Currently, the only, the only behavior that, that ships with the module is integration with Scroller. For people, for people who don't know, Scroller is an open source animation library. And um, it allows you to create parallax style scrolling. You configure your animation by using tag attributes. Now, this is something that Scroller implements. Now, I agree, you know, we could probably fix up the UI and we're in the process of doing that, but um, entity, entity behavior for Scroller allows the user to define these attributes when they edit, when they edit the paragraph. So but it's a real tool for designers. Yeah, but it think. is an advanced tool, yeah. unless you know what that is. And you've also read the scroller documentation. That's important. And I just updated the readme for this module recently, saying that you have to read the scroller documentation. Sorry, just a question. Are there permissions for each of those? Can you give permission to the designer, but not the editor, to just, just that? Uh, field permissions. Oh. But we'll have questions at the end. Yeah. <laughs> that's their encouragement. No, they're encouraged, mate. That's, <laughs> cool. that's cool. But so yeah, you could, yeah. I mean, the simple thing is, yeah, you could put field, collection, uh, field permissions in, and because this isn't controlled by features, export it out into features and you're fine. Basic field permissions. Um, yes, and similar to, similar to entity backgrounds, we, we have a custom plugin uh, called Entity Behaviors, and you can implement your own behavior and implement any type of um, uh, JavaScript library. So, yeah, I just encourage you all just to think about that. You know, imagine if you've got that paragraph on a page, what stuff would you want to do with it, you know, and this is just a very handy way for, for you to do the hard work up front for the, the content creators. All right, and the next one, how can we do navigation? So, you know, in the Drupal system, we have the menu system, we have a menu block, we place it on the page, we allow sort of linking between pages, very familiar, we probably all use it all, in almost every site we do. Um, we decided to provide something similar with um, with paragraphs where we'll just sort of have a, a navigation sort of element on the page just to help people uh, sort of go through the, the pages. So Ooh, it's actually not on that page. That's the wrong page. You'll have to go to the demos, just pick out. Yeah, that one, that's good. So on the side here, it? there we go. We get this kind of, this is like a, a sexy version, right? You know, where, <laughs> Where we've, where we've, this is just like a little block with, uh, you know, links, linking into anchors, but we've actually also got another little mm -hmm. scroll at sort of JavaScript library that's attaching onto that to, um, to do some of this stuff as well. So, uh, still uh, a bit of that's, problem there. That's, that's basically it. So, I mean, this could be a much more sort of traditional block up the top, you know, just with like a menu bar. So, if you're doing a single page website, right, you know, just bust this out, put it up the top, bang, you've just got like a whole single page website um, ready to go. Okay, so paragraphs navigation or paras paragraphs and nav still in a sandbox. The module implements custom blocks, each for each uh, one for each content type that allows users to navigate between block um, paragraph items on a single page, and it's very useful as we show for large and long long pages. So users can can navigate between them, but this is an advanced tool, and you'll have to style things yourself and you'll probably have to get a designer to make sure that um, the look and feel uh, looks right for your particular pages. And well this was meant to be a GIF but it didn't work anyway. All right so there, there came a time in our standing around the whiteboard where we had to say enough's enough we're going to do no more sort of modules so we've, we've, we've drawn a line in the sand now and once once we've done all this work we kind of look back at what we've done and we see what we've really created is not really so much a site building story here, but it's, it's really a content creation story, a kind of like a content strategy thing almost. We're actually giving the uh, editors, the content creators, the designers, the ability to create better pages that can tell a really good story. So we're not like bogged down, bogged down in sort of data modeling and fields and like rigid structure here. We're kind of giving freedom to editors and, so that they can get the graphics that they want, the words that they want, and actually tell something. And I think this is hopefully going to be, you know, of interest to, you know, content strategists and marketers, as well as uh, storytellers and, and authors. It should lead to like a better sort of user experience, better conversion rates, and uh, you know, um, sort of ho hopefully get all that sort of really good stuff uh, sort of coming out. All right. So 
We've already seen this site in action, but we'll just quickly go through um, a couple of sort of little demo pages just so you can kind of see how it's all come together. And uh, these pages have been done by some of our designers at Morph, so uh, Chloe over there and uh, another guy called Peter. Um, so we'll just quickly whiz through a couple of these little pages just to sort of show how, how some of it can get together. So this, this one here is like, you know, you've got the sort of ubiquitous slider. Um, up the top, I wish Colin was here, he would have liked that one. Um, we got, um, and then there's basically just, just telling a story, you know, using simple sort of content ones with um, a, a sort of like a bit of a grid in the, the WYSIWYG there. Um, you know, once we're seeing, we're seeing sort of classy sort of edge to edge layouts here, um, edge to edge sort of uh, background images, and uh, you know, basically just sort of providing information. And I think if you would look at this site, you're going to say, well, that's not really looking like the normal. Drupal site. Um, now, I, it's one thing I haven't really mentioned here. I I'm, I'm don't mean to be getting down on sort of data modeling and doing all that sort of great stuff that Drupal is all about. You know, here we're really seeing like the, the flexibility and the freedom side of the equation, but of course you still have the, uh, the traditional sort of data modeling that you, you would be doing. Um, all right, Ivan, so yeah, we've, that's, that's all pretty cool. And then another sort of uh, demo is done by um, sort of Peter. Peter actually did all of the cooking and all of the photography, videoing, and yeah. design and layout for this one. So that's pretty amazing. So yeah, background images, just a, a standard sort of content thing with an image in it. Uh, it's got a funny little sort of parallax thing in here on the right hand side. I actually sort of laughed when I saw that for the fir first time. Pick it man. There we go. Isn't that sweet? Um, <laughs> the video, we, we won't subject you to the video, um, but that's you know, that's just an ordinary content one. Um, you see the classy paragraphs with the, the colors going edge to edge. And here we have a, a really nice little effect there with the, the scroller thing. So, you know, Peter said he wanted to do this effect and we just went away and worked out how to do it in scroller and, uh, you know, we're really happy with the outcome. And just a, a funny little parallax sort of going in the wrong direction thing at the end there. So yeah, that's 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 a nice one. I think, hey, imagine if you could, you know, have pages that told stories like that for your clients, and you know, it's possible. And finally, this is just a bit more of a sort of techy one. Peter just went to crazy with ones, with some of his uh, effects, but this is just kind of showcasing scroller and some of the the dorky things you can do uh, here with, with this kind of stuff. Not everyone's cup of tea, but you know, this is the kind of flexibility you've got just by punching in a few uh, a few variables. All right, mate. Yeah, what's, yeah. what's next? Well, that's... Oh, oh there what? we go. Questions. I think that's it. Is that? That's it. No, and, you know, we've, we've done the spiel. This is for content uh, site creators to create amazing tools for uh, content editors and, and designers. Yeah, so thank you very much, guys. This seems to be a common refrain for some reason. Okay, so why don't we? All right, crack let's go. Open let's go entity backgrounds. I think that's yeah. the one that you guys really want to see. Um, so again, just three paragraph, three paragraph items. Let's log in. Um, give it a bit. Hope, hopefully, the internet stays up. Okay, so just standard body field summary, and then here. So this is the paragraph, okay? Um, so you can see classy is up the top here, but, but, but you don't have to use classy, but you can select a style. And then this is the, if we increase this, this is just a standard. So it's just content? It's just content. And this is where you actually set up, um, set up the parallax. So, if you were to remove it, this is just a uh, media, media, media embed widget, and that's and that's just an image field, and that's just a text field. But just show the pluggable nature. So we, we've just done a little bit of UI magic here, where these are all sort of like C tools yeah. plugins here to implement each one of these. So that's an image, parallax, and color. Yeah. And because any paragraph can only ever have one background, we've kind of got it so that it just shows and hides. Depending. So this is all pluggable here, so you can just create anything you want and code away, and it will just plug in. So on this case, we're using Parallax, 
And you just want to show the, the color one quickly, Ivan, just so, so you can see on the color one, we just get a, a different sort of UI element here. And uh, yeah, with the image, you just get a yeah, yeah the something you get something that. So that's just a basic. Yeah, yeah that's like the the pluggable um, sort of version of it. But and just above while we're here in the UI, you can see on the behaviors, this pluggable, very similar. But here, on any paragraph, you could have multiple yeah. sort of behaviors. So you can see Ivan's just clicked the height, so the height one's shown, and he's clicked the scroller one, so we get this kind of scroller element where you can enter in all those crazy data attributes. So that's so we try to keep the UI as clean as possible. You know, we, we know that paragraphs can be a bit unwieldy in the, the back end, so we try to keep this stuff as, as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. So if we scroll down quickly, you can see that the color one just has a basic um, color value there, and uh, and the image one just has an image attached to it. Um, but you may look at this and go, oh, there are a lot of fields. But if you were to just use paragraphs. Just take out that, and you still have all of these to deal with. So it's not really that much for the editor to um, handle. So let's go to entity uh, behaviors. So you can have a look at the scroller. You're going to scare people out of Yeah, I know. Uh, so again, scroller is a library <laughs> that we did not write. Um, it's a, it's a it's an open source library you can grab off GitHub, um, but it allows you to define uh, your sc uh, scrolling using these type of attributes. So I highly recommend that you read the documentation for scroller first before creating an issue saying, I installed it and it doesn't work. Uh, so yes. If you put a field description there that just had a couple of examples. That's right. Absol yeah. Absolutely, yeah. but I've also looked at, there's a few, there's one module, I think it's called, um, key properties that I was hoping where you could actually select that as a drop down and then define that and then have that as another field. But yeah, absolutely, we can put in, we can put in a bit of description and fix up the readmes and stuff like that, yeah. How clonable is paragraphs? Yes. No, well, I, 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 wait, yeah, I no clone, I think I've seen an issue, but that's, but No, it's well, no, no. paragraphs doesn't know, oh, okay. but I, I think I saw an issue saying um, paragraphs doesn't work well with node clone. So um, I think you would have to write, yeah, at this point, I'll, I would test it out first. I would test it out. Well, I suspect it just keeps the same ID and just copies that ID. Yeah. Because you're point, probably pointing back to the old paragraph and getting confused. That's, that's just a guess. I haven't actually yes. tried it. And I, think, yeah. and, I, and I think I've experienced that problem where I've cloned it thinking, oh, sweet, it worked. And then, and then I changed the paragraph in another page, which changed in the paragraph in another page, and it all just kind of exploded. And that makes sense because the entity reference. Exactly. Yeah. It is yeah. just, an, just an ID. Mm. Yes. Um, How much time have we got there, Ivan? Um, another seven minutes. Oh, cool. Oh, no, we're done. We're done. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, go on. Can you quickly show why you use Panelizer? Why Panelizer? Yeah, why are you using it? Well, where you're using it? Um, okay, so... Yeah. All right. Okay. Like to um, use it without Panelizer. So. You can, you can you use can. it. This is just for Edgy that we, we uh, had yes, to, we yes, had to yes, pass yes. that we're just using, variable into the layout. Yeah, we're okay. just using... Um, yeah, we're using Panelizer just for Edgy. I don't want to get into, I haven't got time to go into the technical details of why, but we, we, use, we use Panelizer a lot. And um, the reason why we use Panelizer is that you can, you can give editors the ability to select certain, certain um, display layouts from the edit form. So you can have an article which, which can be displayed with or without a sidebar. And that's a big win for us and, our, our, and clients love it. So... Yeah. But just explain with the layouts and the edge. You can have what we call normal layouts yeah. and, and edge. Do you want to explain the, how we, that variable passes through? Mm, okay. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, we have, we have a layout and a style. So let me just jump in and go. Now, this is another part. Um, so we have a style called edgy and the hardest thing when I was developing this for the, I think the fourth time, just the whole, just the whole mechanism to make it edgy, we've done it a few times. It was very hard to figure out 
at the actual um, pane layout, should, should this paragraph be edgy or not? And I'm, I must admit, in, in the first version, we used a global variable, which was a bad idea, <laughs> because you could only have one, one variable which said, this is edgy. And if you did one or two extra node loads, everything would just break. So, we, so after spending hours looking through panels hooks, and it has many hooks, I found hook pre, pre, hook pre process render or something like that. And I found out that the only way of um, figuring out if it's edgy or not was to create a basic style. And this is something that CTools does a basic style. And, I, and I've got a bit of code that checks to see um, if this style is applied, then, then it's classed as edgy. Um, I was talking yesterday to one, um, to one guy who's actually worked on paragraphs and, I, and, I, and I've asked him, can I do this with context? Because paragraphs has a whole context system. Or I think Murray, Murray, Murray and I have discussed, can we just do it based on a layout? So when you set this layout, so when you come, when, when you come here and set the layout, you just assume it's edgy. So there's, like most things in Drupal, there's always 10 ways of doing things and it's just coming up with that nice medium of a nice clean way of doing it. But I'm sure this will change. But for now, it seems to work pretty well. But you're, you're doing the tweak on the paragraph item template. Is that, am I right in saying It that? depends what's controlling your paragraph. Because another thing is, if you're using Display Suite to render your paragraph, that means the standard template is not used. So it's hard to inject that extra class. Um, I, I am thinking of actually creating a patch and submitting it into the paragraphs issue queue for them to place just a classes variable in the template so we can just pass in. Like little things like that, we, uh, to actually work around that, we've had to write a whole custom template for it. So, should do that because that's a problem for people not even I know, I know. And we do have, and one thing, and just, and just one thing I'll quickly show you is that we do have a patch in paragraphs to sort out this problem. So, um, two seconds. Uh, so one thing, one thing we had to sort out Ooh. is, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's hard to see, prob probably That's is. all right, I'll show, I'll show. Yeah. Um, yeah. See this paragraph item 80? Now that's the, that's the only way for us to actually target a particular paragraph item. And there is a patch in the um, paragraphs issue queue to get that in because it's, it's a few lines of code, but every module depends on it. And right now, the bit of glue code uh, is in paragraphs pack, and I have to put in the readme and tell them either apply this patch or just enable paragraphs pack uh, to get that to work. So, so we are actually trying to push as much stuff back into paragraphs module as possible when we reach certain limitations. Like, like all our background and behavior stuff is all targeting that, that yeah. class. So that, yes. that's how all that stuff will hook in. So that, that's a little thing we had to add. Yes. Any other questions? Well, just, just on the revisioning, I, I haven't done it, but I've, I've got a friend who does content revisioning. She's really happy about it because it does support it, and that's, that's why it's in the agov distro. The paragraphs have gone in because I think revisioning is supported. So I can't actually speak with, from personal experience, but that's what I, my understanding is. So I think the revisioning's done. Um, yeah, entity cache, I don't, I don't know. I mean, in the past, I've, I have done sort of performance analysis of different entities with entity cache, believe it or not, and... I, when I was doing that, I did see that, say, field collection didn't support it, when, at least when I was doing it, but other entities did. So I think it's up to the entity, you know, whoever's done that entity to, to sort of support that caching. And I haven't done that. I, so I'm not really sure, to be honest, but mm. you'd have to, have to research that. But, yeah, it is true. You will be loading more entities with this stuff, so there probably is going to be a bit more um, load on the page. But in terms of, like, the, the time it takes to load an entity compared to a node is probably... Uh, you know, like a tenth or, you know, something like that of what, what a node load is or maybe even less. So, uh, you know, in, in the big picture scheme of things, 
loading and ending is much more than loading a node, and loading a node is much more than the bootstrap process. So you're, you're probably only looking at, you know, the very rough numbers, 1% of what the bootstrap is, you know, or just something like that. Mm -hmm. But bootstrap's 150 milliseconds, like a node is, you know, that bit more, and the entity is just a smaller thing on the end. So I'm not too, too worried about that. Yeah. And um, just to add to that, I mean, if 99.9% .9 of your traffic's anonymous, then just use Varnish. If you want to handle authenticated traffic, look at using panels. Um, panels allows you to have granular, I think, panel pane level caching. So you could actually, I probably don't have it up, but the previous page that I had up where you have all your panel panes, you can set up caching at that level. So if you're really wor wor worried about it, you can, you have multiple options depending on the traffic. Yeah. Go ahead, Luke. Yeah. It's quite interesting. But I've also been thinking, like, how does this affect the storage of content as well? Like, you're now storing it inside a node, inside a collection of entities. So it's like, is that, is the content now, but I think it's just part of the learning curve of, like, how you do it best. So like, I don't know, have you guys got a thought on that? Like, how it's now, you've now got your content stored in multiple entities rather than just one node? Well, it, it's stored in multiple entities entities, but you can access it from one area. Yeah. Um, I do know that there is talk about being able to replicate paragraphs. So yeah. there is another issue in the paragraphs issue queue about replicating paragraph entities. And I think there's even a contrib module called paragraph replicate. Um, but I mean, you can access it from one area. And one of the reasons why we prefer this over, say, panels and letting an editor go to town with Panelizer is that they can manage everything from one page. It's very hard to tell an editor, oh, create your body here, but then go to a whole different interface in Panelizer, which looks totally different and is buggy sometimes, um, and manage and manage other pieces of content in there. Yeah. So oh, we haven't had any bad feedback yeah. yet. I mean, I, I got no, no problems with it whatsoever. You know, Drupal's a system that provides these entities. You build the data model you want to support what you're doing. I mean, a node in itself is split out into fields which have separate tables and all that. The, 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 I think the one area from an editor's point of view, they may just want to go into the WYSIWYG and enter content. And sometimes it could be a bit weird if they have to then break into another paragraph out of that. And that, that yeah. could be a bit of a jarring experience. But, but certainly on these pages where it's just, you know, some stuff at the bottom, you know, where it's, you know, it, it's got a nicer kind of, you know, flow to it. But that would be potentially one bad experience. I think it's a good start, really good start mm. kind of Would you advocate getting rid of the body field altogether on a node and just using paragraphs? You could, you could. I conceptually, I don't see a problem with that. I mean, obviously, you've got the summary, which is, you know, really important for SEO things. But the um, only, but the, really, yeah, the only issue is if you have a teaser and um, you're creating views that relies on some summary, it can be very hard to figure out, okay, which paragraph is the body? You know, you know how do you figure out the context of the paragraph? Um, but but just, just conceptually, yeah, get rid yeah. of the body. I mean, when, when you look at, you know, how we represent things on the web, you know, you have a URL for, you know, location and identification, and, you know, title, naming resources is really important. But after that, it's like, well, who cares? That resource on the web can rep represent anything. Right. There's no rule that says it's got to have a body, right? So I, I think you could just trash it. And it All depends right. what the user expects. Sorry, one more question. And, and, and sorry, before we finish, we are having a boff after this at 4.45, I think, the last boff. The last boff of the, the day. The last boff of the day to discuss all this stuff, yeah. With the um, Gov CMS supplements and the restriction on the design, are we going to be able to May, that's the question we've been asking yes. all weekend too. So yes. we, we got really excited when we saw paragraphs within AGAV and we got, oh, cool, we're going to be able to put all this stuff in. But the way, I think the way, oh, well, AGAV you can, I, th I think, because you've got control of that. But with Gov CMS, I don't believe you can put any new modules so I didn't in. Mean AGAV. You, did, you did mean AGAV? Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, if you, if you are able to install new modules in, then of course this will work, yeah, just out of the box with the paragraphs that are in there. You know, all that background stuff you will just plug into any paragraphs you create in AGOV. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, if you guys have any other questions, come to our BOF and we'll answer them and we can show you all this stuff and can you help just you out. Back to the, um, just the thing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs>